Stephen Voorhees, a Friday the 13th and Steven Universe crossover fan fiction. Why do I do anything anymore? Why do I even try? Why, 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 what is life? What, do you, what is even my purpose here anymore? Why, why, why do I do the things that I do just to, just to suffer? Why do I do anything just to suffer? That's not part of the story. I'm just asking. The story begins shortly after Stephen finishes singing Full Disclosure. On the way back to the temple, Stephen comes across debris from the gem warship and begins crafting weapons and a mask from it, then puts them all in a handbag. All right. Later, when Connie demands that Stephen look her in the eye and tell her he doesn't want to hang out anymore, he dons the mask and pulls out the machete he made, then jumps out and stabs Connie in the abdomen, then tells her we won't be. All right. Um, I, 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 all right. Later, Stephen raids a boiler factory, kills a, kills a worker, and steals his outfit. I, 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 okay. I, why does he do the things that he does? I, I mean, this is, this is, this is a problem in a, a lot of writing and not just fan fiction itself. But what is the, the motivation of our character here? Is he just killing because he sang a song and it's going a different route with the story? I don't, I don't remember the episode where he sings full disclosures, so I wonder if he's particularly, uh, particularly edgy after it. But, um, I, uh, all right, I, 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 I guess I'll just go with the flow here. Back at the temple, Stephen manipulates his age to an adult, shaves his head, and dons the outfit and mask, dubbing himself Stephen Voorhees after infamous serial killer Jason Voorhees. Okay, so Jason Voorhees is a real person in this Steven Universe extended universe? Steven's universe has Jason Voorhees in it? So now in Steven's universe, he is J Steven Voorhees. I, I mean, Jason Voorhees is just called Jason Voorhees because that's like his last name. So this, this, when, when, if you just killed people... Wouldn't he want to not be like a like a Jason Voorhees copycat? Because that's like the most pussy thing I can think of. For any real life serial killer to try to like emulate Jason Voorhees, uh, uh, an essentially undead serial killer, that's just that's just like pussy shit. That's like your four hundred pound neighbor grabbing a machete and an overcoat and a fucking uh, Jason Voorhees hockey mask, running around and trying to kill people and go just just constantly getting out of breath. I uh, I I think that's just the lamest shit ever. Really, honestly, it just, it, wow, what a, I didn't know Steven was such a pussy. <laughs> right about then, Greg, after calming down from his panic attack earlier, rides in looking for Steven. Just then, Steven heads down, impales Greg with the spear he made, then disappears into the shadows. Why, why does he kill his dad? Why? 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 There, there, there's no purpose here. This is just, this is like a list. Like I'm reading a list of things that Steven could do if Steven was an utter sociopath and psychopath. I, all right. He then disappears into the shadows. A few days later, as Steven and the gems are working on clearing the debris of the gem warship, Steven spots the cool kids walking up. Is that their official name? The like group of, group of cool kids. Are they called like the cool kids? Are they like a gang? Walking up and walks away when the gems aren't looking and dons his gear again. He then kills the cool kids one by one. Over time, the town learns of Steven's actions, not knowing it's him that's doing the killings. At night, Connie's parents search Beach City for Connie, but when they wander... Now that you're looking for the word wander, not the word wonder, towards the part of the beach where the temple is, they find Connie, Greg, and the cool kid's head spiked on a wheel. Then Steven walks up to them in his gear and impales them both on the broadsword he made. Really think like the gems wouldn't notice the, the series of impaled heads near their beach home? Really think the townspeople at Beach City wouldn't notice the, the series of impaled heads near their beach home? That just, whew, that just, that just sounds, uh... Like everyone who lives in Beach City is a is a, is a blathering moron. I, uh, I I I don't I don't I don't think that's that's how that works. Anyway, he impales them both on the broadsword he made. This is a giant paragraph, so this is a little hard to read. The structure is garbage here. After several months, Beach City becomes a ghost town, and the gems begin to suspect something is wrong. And Stephen tells them, "This is a good lesson to the human race. <laughs> My name is not important." But what is important is what I'm going to do. I just fucking hate Beach City. That's that's okay. Steven is a Steven is a, is a high level edge lord. This is a this is awful. This is an awful piece of writing. Pearl begins to think that Steven did the killings, but then realizes that he could couldn't have done it. 
So the gems suspect Peridot did the killings. However, Amethyst slips on a lever, and the gems fall through a hidden door and find a lair beneath the house containing the bodies of Stephen's victims. I thought his... He, he, did, he, did he just impale the heads and keep the bodies? In the house, Stephen realizes the gems have seen too much. And wouldn't if they, like, fell fell through a trap door and a hidden lever, wouldn't they end up in, like, the bubble room? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, writer. I don't know, author, if you're thinking about the general blueprint of the Stevens Universe Universe house. I don't know if, I don't know if you're paying attention to the, uh, the, the lore of Stevens Universe. I don't know if it's, uh, it's hitting you, you know? I, I think you're just kind of writing garbage. But I'm, I'm honestly not surprised. So you know what? You, you, keep, you keep writing garbage. Get better. In the house, Steven realizes the gems have seen too much and dons his gear after manipulating his age again. He jumps down into the lair and attempts to kill the gems for snooping on his personal work. The gems put up a good fight, but Steven overwhelms them. Before he can kill them, however, Pearl impales Steven in the chest with her... Sp- with, 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 with her spear, and his mask falls off, revealing his true identity, much to the shock of the gems. Pearl wonders why Steven would do this, but Garnet isn't surprised, as she realizes that Steven just wanted to keep humans away from the area to protect them. Really? No. That's not something Steven would do. I He wouldn't... He wouldn't commit mass murder to protect the gems, because the, the whole goal of the gems, to my knowledge, is that they're there to protect humanity and the Earth from the gems. So why why would Steven Steve Ann's universe do such an incredibly like stupid out of character thing? Oh, I know, I have the answer because this is a garbage fan fiction. But it was a misguided attempt. Amethyst says they can protect humanity without him. Pearl says Rose Quartz would be disappointed. Garnet says Steven was a good kid for a time. The gems then leave the lair and warp to the kindergarten to look for Peridot. Let's get on to the review. I feel like this is one of those ideas that you can't uh, completely convey without a lot of setup. If you want to if you want to portray a character that's not a known sociopath as a sociopath, you have to first in my, in my opinion of course, you have to break their character. You have to take the character that has been set up and you have to slowly break it. You you introduce a couple chapters and you introduce heartache. Uh, the the road to a villain, and this is of course my opinion, isn't this fast thing. I mean, of course it can be. Anything is possible. But the road to to becoming a villain is usually paved with little concessions. Little concession here, little concession there as you're trying to do what you think is right. Most really good villains are villains not that are just, I'm evil, blah, but are villains that are just misguided. They have their own goals. They have their own ambitions. A lot of villains that I really like are villains that think they are doing good. They don't, th- or, or, or they're doing it for selfish reasons, but they, but that, 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 you can't, you can't just go, Steve Van Universe, pick up a machete, and then he kills some guys, because that's what this story boils down to, and I'm gonna give this story a 4 out of 10. Just kidding, actually a negative 4 out of 10. I tricked you, fooled you. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos. There are also things if you want to watch me read more fan fiction, click up in the top right-hand corner. If you want to subscribe, hey, that's also an option. That'll be up at the top left corner. If you want to donate to my Patreon, because I'm a pile of garbage, but I uh, I can be less garbage with your help, that's in the bottom right-hand corner. Anyway, I'm going to go. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good idea.